All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are going to continue here with standard 3A. This set of notes, you're going to need pages 27 and 29 in your notebook. Right now, we're going to talk about King Henry VIII. King Henry VIII was the king of England. King Henry wanted a divorce. He wanted to divorce his wife, Catherine of Aragon, who was from Spain. And the reason he wanted to divorce her was because she did not birth him a son. He wanted to marry Anne Boleyn. So you might already know that King Henry VIII is infamous for divorcing or beheading his wives in order to get a new one, all because he was not given a son. And that was really what he wanted because being a king, you needed to have a son to be the heir to your throne. So this picture shows you all of King Henry VIII's wives. Woohoo! So the actions of King Henry VIII. So because Henry VIII was Catholic, he was forbidden to get a divorce. The Pope did not allow it. Nobody in the Catholic Church was permitted to get a divorce. That is how it was. And a lot of times that is how it is still viewed today. Henry decides to break from the Catholic Church all because he was not permitted to get a divorce. So he's going to say, forget you Catholic Church, I'm going to start my own church. And in my church, people can get a divorce, namely me. So Henry VIII is going to begin what is known as the Church of England. And this is going to be the national church in England. Henry's going to go on to marry, divorce, or behead six wives. Six. He's also going to pass what is known as the Act of Supremacy where King Henry VIII is going to make himself the head of the Church of England. So like how the Pope is the head of the Catholic Church, Henry is going to make himself the head of his church. Henry is also going to appropriate lands and wealth of the Roman Catholic Church that were in England. So at that time, if land in England had once belonged to the Catholic Church, when Henry decided to create his own re religion, his own church, at that time he declared all lands in England his, and it belonged to the Church of England. And appropriate means to take without permission. King Henry VIII is going to die, and if you go ahead and watch some of the other videos that I've posted here on the playlist, he's going to have two daughters, Queen Mary and Queen Elizabeth. All right, He had a son, the son was very sick, he died very young, so unfortunately when King Henry VIII dies, the only uh, heirs to his throne were females, were women. So Queen Mary is going to take the throne first. She's going to do bad stuff to England. And then Queen Elizabeth, the one that the people down in Richmond, the SOL people want you to know, she's going to take over her sister's spot. She's going to be the Queen of England, and she's going to do wonderful things. So Elizabeth is going to be Henry VIII's Protestant daughter and at this time children were raised whatever religion the mother was so Queen Mary who we don't need to really discuss she was raised Catholic 
And so people of England at this time were Protestant and they did not want to have to go back to being Catholic. And Queen Mary wanted everybody to go back to being Catholic. It was disastrous. So when Queen Elizabeth takes the throne, she is Protestant and the people of England were very welcoming of her and her Protestant religion. So Queen Elizabeth is going to firmly establish Protestantism in England for forevermore. And you might know it here in the States as Episcopalian, but over in England it is known as the Anglican Church. So the Church of England, same thing as the Anglican Church, same thing. Queen Elizabeth, she's going to have tolerance towards dissenters. And again, dissenters are people who disagree with or reject the doctrines or authority of an established church. So anybody in England who chose a different religion other than what she was, Queen Elizabeth said it was okay. That she wanted people go ahead and follow whatever religion they wanted. So this is freedom of religion. Made the people of England very happy. And Elizabeth I, she is going to expand the English Empire to the Americas and she's going to establish colonies to help strengthen England's economy. But another fun one in 1588, King Philip of Spain, he is going to be very upset that Queen Elizabeth in England is Protestant. And he's going to make it his mission to bring back Catholicism to England, to make the people of England be Catholic again. So he's going to launch a Spanish armada, and an armada is a fleet of warships. And this is all to attempt to punish Protestant England and its queen, Elizabeth I. King Philip had thought, hey, England's being run by a woman. I'm a man. This should be easy. It's a woman. She can't win this. But I hate to say it, gentlemen, he was wrong. Queen Elizabeth and England had won this fight. Elizabeth had supported Protestant subjects who had rebelled against King Philip and Queen Elizabeth and the Protestants of England had won. King Philip of Spain and his Spanish Armada were defeated by Queen Elizabeth I and the Protestants of England. Thank you ladies and gentlemen. This is all I have for you today. So now we have discussed Martin Luther John Calvin, King Henry VIII, and Queen Elizabeth I. And that concludes Standard 3A. Thank you all very much, and I look forward to seeing you next class. Have a good one.